This is Mom Squad Pod, your weekly update on tips, tricks, and all things parenting with Maureen Kyle. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us on the Mom Squad Pod, where we talk all things parenting. And I think a lot of you are trying to figure out what are you gonna do with the kids this summer? I'll have to just say that everywhere I go, whenever I say, well, I'm from Cleveland, I'm from Northeast Ohio, everyone says, best kept secret at least three months out of the year. And that, those are the months that we're in now. We are in the summer months where it's so great to just have a staycation. And with the gas prices the way they are, you might have nixed that out of state vacation. Now you're wondering, what can I do with the kids? What am I forgetting about? I think we always look at, you know, Instagram pictures of what our friends are doing and thinking, why didn't I think of that? So I'm bringing in the experts today. We have Jen Brozdovich with Destination Cleveland, who is gonna go through all of the fun things that we can do. So thanks so much for, for compiling this list and yeah. being with us today. Yeah, happy summer. We're ready for an exciting summer here in the land. I know, it, it always is. And I always, like, like I just said, I see people post pictures and I'm thinking, why didn't I put that on my calendar? So we're gonna get people prepared. But in general, before we go into like the time constraint and, and the festivals that are happening, in, happening during certain weeks, in general, what are some of the best kept secrets of maybe some of our local parks or our metro parks or, or places to go that families can just enjoy whenever they have that time? Yeah, so, I mean, these are definitely the, the three top months for people to explore <laughs> Cleveland, um, but we want people to explore year round too. Yeah. So um, while the weather is nice now, we'll share some ideas that'll keep you busy year round. Um, like you said, those gas prices are really tough right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're ch changing your plans, planning a staycation, or if you do have friends and family coming into town, there's a lot of really great stuff to, to do this summer. So outdoors, like you mentioned, the Metro Parks, one of our greatest assets here in Cleveland, best in the nation has been named. So, I mean, we know, but it's always great to remind people that there are Metro Parks all across Northeast Ohio, all across the area here. Yeah. So maybe get out of your neighborhood, check out a different park that you don't usually check out. The Metro Parks has their trail challenge going on. So when you visit a certain number of parks and hike a uh, walk or bike or mm -hmm. skate some of those trails, uh, paddle some of the, the waterways, um, you can check those off and get some prizes. But the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve is actually something that I've been talking about a lot with some of my coworkers because I do think that's something that's one of the best kept secrets here. I think people forget about it, but it's so beautiful. It's on the water, it's quiet, it's peaceful, a little something for everyone, a nice easy outing for the day for the family. Um, just one of the best kept secrets here in Cleveland by far. So is it is it like an Instagram worthy, like you go get your photos taken there or like are there are there events that people can do or, or activities that people can do when they're at Definitely. Instagram worthy. Yeah. Um, you can plan a whole day out there with the family, you know, maybe pack some snacks, pack a picnic, just take the family out there. I will say no dogs allowed. So if okay. you have four legged members of your family, you got to leave them at home for this one, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it's just such a great spot to get out and enjoy nature. I think if you're in downtown Cleveland or if you're wandering around the Cleveland area, you forget that we have all these great natural assets too. Yeah. Um, so it's a really great chance to get back to nature there. Yeah. Um, and you're not too far from downtown. So if you want to plan a trip downtown afterwards, grab lunch with the family, grab dinner with the family, um, head over to Public Square. They have their summer splash in the square <laughs> for the families. So that's really great for kids. <laughs> a great chance to cool off after a, a long day of walking through the nature preserve. And is that free, the, the public Completely square free. splash pad? I mean, we're, we're as we're taping this in the middle of 90 degree days, so I think a lot of people are always like, where can I go to just cool off? So yeah. that's free. Splash pad, um, water tables for the kids, other activities for them um, in the afternoon, the hottest part of the day. <laughs> um, and it's a good opportunity to take the kids out and let them burn off some of that energy, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then while you're downtown, you can, like I said, grab lunch, have dinner or walk down to North Coast Harbor, visit the Rock Hall, visit Great Lakes Science Center on a day when it's reaching the 90s, reaching close to 100. Yeah. Um, that's a great opportunity to get inside, cool off a little bit. And what about some of the um, outdoor music festivals? I know the Metro Parks was, isn't it the Metro Parks that was bouncing around with like a different concert here or there for families to go to? Yeah, so every Friday or once, Every month on Fridays, uh -huh. Metro Parks is doing their Sounds of Summer concert. Um, so that's a really great opportunity, again, to explore some Metro Parks that you might not usually get to because they are, like you said, bouncing around, going to different locations. Yeah. They're at a different park each month. So that's a really cool thing to do for the family. You can pack a picnic, take your blanket, just sit down and, and enjoy um, some Sounds of Summer in the Metro Parks. Yeah. Um, but no matter where you are in Cleveland, if you're on the east side, if you're in the west side, if you're downtown, there is definitely a community concert series happening. I 
I can guarantee you probably only have to drive a few minutes to find a community concert series near you. Yeah. Um, Wade Oval Wednesdays is back this year. That's every Wednesday evening over at Wade Oval and University Circle. Again, a great family outing. There's food trucks. You can bring your own food if you want. There's gonna be activities for the kids, live music, and they've actually extended it this year. So it starts in June and goes all the way through the summer. Oh, wow. So every Wednesday, put it on your calendar. If you're looking for something to do in the evenings, you can head over there. Um, but yeah, really combining two of our greatest assets here yeah. in Cleveland, the outdoors and our incredible music scene. And Wade Oval, I, I don't know if you're not familiar, those of you who are listening and watching, I mean, Wade Oval is just right in the middle of all the museums. So you can yeah. pop into a museum, then pop out and, and do that. Do you, do you know what kind of activities they have for the kids or does it change? I think it changes weekly. Okay. Um, but definitely, I mean, it's just such an incredible asset there right yeah. in the center of Cleveland. It's so beautiful over there. Um, we just had the cherry blossoms in bloom over there. And so we had a lot of action there in the spring, um, but all of the trees and flowers will be in bloom for the summer. So if you're like me, pop your allergy pill before you go out, you will definitely <laughs> feel the pollen in the air, um, right. but a really great opportunity to get out there with yeah. the family. So, uh, speaking of the music festivals, Rock Hall, Aren't they, they're putting out some concerts, some free concerts? Yeah, people? so a lot of people don't necessarily associate Rock Hall with free, but they do <laughs> right. have free concerts on the plaza um, throughout the summer, starting in July and August. Um, they have their um, Rock Hall Live series, and that's happening right outside on that stage in front of the Rock mm -hmm. Hall. Um, it's, like you said, most of the shows are completely free. So an awesome opportunity to get down there to North Coast Harbor, check out some free, free music, um, beer trucks, music, live fun and entertainment for yeah. the family, food trucks, all sorts of cool stuff happening yeah. down there. And there's a couple festivals coming back too. I, let's talk about the tall ships because that's something, I know I was, um, as part of the TV station, they had us go down there. I was blown away about just with how beautiful these ships are mm -hmm. and how my kids loved just walking on and off. So talk to us about the opportunity that, that people have there to go see these tall ships up close. Yeah, so this is coming back in July. Um, it hasn't been here for a few years, so um, people may not even know about it if mm -hmm. you you know haven't had it on your radar for a few years. But it's coming back uh, second weekend in July. It's going to be so cool. I mean, there is truly something for everyone down there. The kids can walk on and off the ships. They can attend Ask the Captain sessions. There's a rock climbing wall. There's kids activities. Of course, food, craft beer for the adults. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a vendor market down there. So really, you can make an entire day of it at the Tall Ships Festival. It's just such a cool thing, and it is something that only comes here every few years. Mm -hmm. So if you have the chance, you definitely want to check it out. It is a once-in-a-lifetime thing to yeah. see these ships in person. It starts on Thursday night. They do a parade of sail um, where they'll have the boats all coming down the water. It's wow. just its so incredible up there at North Coast Harbor. Um, and then every evening, they have different themed activities. So there's a happy hour evening, maybe grab a babysitter for the night <laughs> and head out with, um, with your spouse. Or um, the final night, they'll have a fireworks show down there, too. So that's just something, like I said, of all ages, yeah. some, they gear it towards the kids, something for the kids, something for the adults. You're definitely going to learn something new, and you're going to have a great time. Yeah. It's so funny, too, with Cleveland. As I travel, I feel like Cleveland has like a few things that are the claim to fame. And first thing was always, I mean, a couple of years ago, it was like, oh, LeBron James. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah, we see him every day. And then it's, um, you know, Rock Hall. Yeah, we have the Rock Hall. And then another one is the Christmas Story House. Yeah. We get a lot of recognition for the Christmas Story House. So, and I know it gets a lot of attention at Christmas and around the holidays, but then, you're going to tell us about Christmas in July. I didn't even think about like doing some events around the summer surrounding yeah. Christmas Story House. So if you have kids who can't wait until December for yeah. Christmas, <laughs> I, I think adults feel that way too. Yeah. Um, you can plan an entire Christmas themed weekend for Christmas in July right here in Cleveland. Of course, for the adults, we know that Great Lakes does their tapping of their Christmas ale every year. Yes. But you can plan a family weekend all centered around Christmas. So North Coast Harbor, Downtown Cleveland Alliance are hosting Christmas in July right up there at North Coast Harbor. This is the second year for this and it's just such a cool event for families it is christmas themed it happens july 23rd so almost halfway to christmas you can start the countdown with the kids yeah um and it's got everything that you could ask for face painting crafts balloon animals um, all sorts of activities for the kids last year they had ice carvers all sorts of cool stuff live entertainment and music of course food and drink down there yeah. Um, but they also, if you want to get an early, a very early start on your Christmas cards this year, you can snap a photo with Santa at the Cleveland script sign. Oh. So that's a really cool opportunity. Get a family photo down there with the Cleveland script sign. 
put it on your Christmas cards this year, use it as your Facebook profile right. picture, whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, but a really cool way to um, cool off in the middle of summer. Yeah. Um, and then it'll all end with an evening showing of Elf down there. So, oh, how fun. <laughs> yeah, so a really cool thing happening that's a one day event, but you can make a whole Christmas themed weekend out of it with a visit to the Christmas Story House over in Tremont or head down to Medina and go to Castle Noel, which yeah. again, just a short drive down the road, but I think a lot of people forget is there, a real hidden gem and Definitely, if you're a Christmas lover, yeah. not to be missed. Yeah, because they have a ton of Christmas paraphernalia. For anybody who doesn't know, I mean, what what did they they have? Don't they have like the elf? They have, yeah. Like, I mean, they have or something. And if you name a Christmas movie, I'm sure they have something <laughs> themed for you yeah. there. Um, but yeah, you can just make an entire Christmas weekend in the middle yeah. of July here in Cleveland. Yeah, it's so funny you mentioned face painting and, and balloon animals. I mean, that's like as long as there's face painting and balloon animals, my kids are in. <laughs> they they want to go there no matter what kind of festival it is. But then. Food, the food you mentioned for adults, it, we are such a foodie town. Yes. And, and it's always like, especially coming out of the pandemic and then the summer months where you can be out on a patio, the list is almost too long to get to all of the places that we want to go. Um, but let's talk about food for a while because Feast of the Assumption, one of my favorite, favorite things to do in the summer and it creeps up come almost like back to school time because it's August, Yeah, right? it's held but in August every year. Huge crowds. Huge crowds, <laughs> and I mean, I love visiting Little Italy anyway. I always yeah. tell people when I get out of the car in Little Italy, it just smells like pasta sauce and cannolis. Exactly. Right? And yes. that's like, th that's heaven to me. Like, what more could you ask for? Yeah. But such a cool opportunity to go and really see that part of the city that mm -hmm. maybe you don't visit with the family a lot. Um, and taste the food down there. Oh my gosh, so much good food at the Feast of the Assumption. Yeah. And be part of that culture down there. Like you said, we have so many great restaurants, so much great ethnic cuisine represented yeah. here, so many nationalities. And that's part of what makes Cleveland so unique, right? right. It's all of the diverse um, communities that we have here in Cleveland. Yeah. So Little Italy, Feast of the Assumption, mark it on your calendars now for August. Um, it did take a pandemic hiatus, so I know a lot of people missed it, but yeah. it was back last year. It's back on the calendar this year. Um, we just have so many great festivals here in Cleveland, and you could plan an entire summer around yeah all of these special events and festivals that are happening. And I love with the feast and some of these festivals too. I mean, because I know Tremont tends to have festivals where they're just tents set up and you can go from tent to tent mm -hmm. and they have their best offerings out there of like a taste. So you, you go and you taste different restaurants, like best dishes. Yeah, they're doing Walkabout Tremont again this year. That's okay. on Friday nights. Um, so yeah, really, I mean, you could go to every neighborhood and find your new favorite restaurant. Yeah. I guarantee if you went out once a week to a different restaurant, it would probably be your new favorite thing in Cleveland. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody has, uh, every city has their like go-to dessert place. And I feel like in Northeast Ohio, it's always, you know, when visitors come in, we got to go to Mitchell's. We got to yes. go to Mitchell's. Just, you Mitchell's. know, the Mitchell brothers, they have, they have a monopoly over Northeast Ohio when it comes to ice cream. And I didn't even know until you told me about, like, a way to go and get more involved in the ice cream making process. Yeah. <laughs> so, like you said, when I have people come to town, yeah. I always take them to Mitchell's in Ohio City. Yes. The, the landmark location there, it's an old theater. So you can tell when you walk by it, it's got that big marquee, but a lot of people don't know the history behind the building. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that you can learn if you take a Mitchell's tasting tour. This is a great opportunity for the family. It is so cool. Kids love ice cream, adults love ice cream. <laughs> what a great family outing for the day. Yeah. It's only $10 per person, so it's super affordable. You'll learn a little bit about the history of the building, how the com company was made, You'll learn about the Mitchell brothers and, you know, why they just decided one day to start making ice cream. Yeah. Um, and best of all, you get to see how the ice cream is made. You do get some samples, so a little taste test of whatever they're making that day. And at the end of it all, you get a coupon for a free ice cream scoop. Which so, so great. Yeah, it's about an hour. So a great opportunity. Go in the morning, go in the afternoon. Yeah. Plan a day in Ohio City with the family before or after. It's so fun. Now, I'm going to pick your brain, Jen, because I know you and your coworkers get to go around to, like, the different restaurants and different neighborhoods. Do you have any favorites? Like if you, it, let's say we do get a babysitter or maybe it is with the entire family, but just those, um, the restaurants in the areas that need, um, let, I mean, not need because whatever, but after the pandemic, I know a lot of restaurants are trying to get the crowds back. What are the ones that we need to check out and make sure that we go to and hit up? 
Yeah, I mean, incredible culinary scene here in Cleveland. Yes. One of our top assets. And like I said earlier, you could go to a different restaurant every night and find something that you yeah. love. Yeah. Um, there are so many amazing ethnic and diverse restaurants here in Cleveland. And I think people forget that we have like these little pockets. We have little Italy, um, we have Asia town, but mm -hmm. there's just so much diversity across the city. And if you haven't been downtown in a few years since mm -hmm. before the pandemic, there are all new restaurants. I mean, there's, there's no empty storefronts on East 4th Street anymore, which is incredible. There's been restaurants that have closed, but more importantly, there's been brand new restaurants that have opened. Yeah. You could walk around downtown and not even recognize some of the, the new restaurants that are there. Um, Destination Cleveland actually put together an international restaurant passport. So if you're looking to try something new, this is a great opportunity for you. Yeah. And all 17 of the restaurants on there are within the city of Cleveland and they offer you a special deal or an offer for going to their restaurant. Oh so you can download that passport on our website and then that'll help guide your next food adventure. So your next date night, your next night out, if you're looking for something family friendly, yeah. um, whether it's Asian cuisine, African cuisine, um, anything else like that, we have it on the international restaurant. Passport That's for sure. so fun. Do you have a favorite? I'm going to put you on the spot. Or can you list a couple favorites? I love anything in Asia Town. Yeah. I just think it's it's such a cool asset to have here in Cleveland, mm -hmm. and you can find a little something of everything. So you can find dinner, you can find dessert, you can find bubble tea. Um, I love Liwa. Yeah. I went there just a few weeks ago. It's yeah. one of my favorites. <laughs> um, downtown Saigon on East 4th Street is a big favorite of the Destination Cleveland staff. I will tell you, um, we definitely, I mean, it's always packed when you go in there, but we are probably some of their top customers on the Destination yeah. Cleveland staff, <laughs> at least one staff member is eating there every week because oh it's gosh. right next to our office. But down on East 4th Street, Indy just opened. That's a great spot for a date night and their cocktails are to die for. They just opened their rooftop bar too. So that's a really great opportunity to go and enjoy the nature here in Cleveland, like be outside, talk yeah. about patio dining. Um, Blue Agave just opened on East 4th Street and there's a brand new restaurant about to open on East 4th called Cordelia. So along with all of the old favorites like Mabel's and uh, Pickwick and Frolic and yeah. Corner Alley down there, you have some new favorites popping up too. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to try them all, so <laughs> I'll report back at the end of the summer how I've done. <laughs> you know what, you bring up Corner Alley and I know this is something we talked about even before we sat down here, um, that's another activity to do with the family. And I'm seeing a lot of bars and, and establishments open up these sort of indoor games. Are there any other ones that we should be checking out with the kids and, and family friendly? Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of these, I think they're called barcades opening. Yes. Um, they're kind of geared towards the kid and all of us where yeah. you can play video games or duck pin bowling or bocce indoors. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot popping up. So we've mentioned Corner Alley, which is a longstanding favorite right there at the corner of Euclid and East 4th. They have bowling, they've got um, air hockey, hockey and video games for the kids, of course, food and drink for the family. 16-bit, um, which used to be in Lakewood, actually just relocated to Ohio City and reopened. So now it's 16-bit and Penn's Mechanical Company, and they have expanded. I mean, it was in Lakewood, it was a kind of small little storefront. Yeah. Um, now it is two floors of fun for the family. So there's duck pin bowling, there's bocce, there's still those video games that you love. Um, Truly take the family, stop at Mitchell's for your ice cream tasting <laughs> right. tour, and then go to 16-bit and Penn's Mechanical yeah. Company. That is family friendly during the day. It does become 21 plus in the evening. Okay. Um, and there's just so many cool spots opening across Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, I can't get over it. One of my favorites is over in Gordon Square, Super Electric Super Electric Pinball Parlor. I have not been there. Talk about, about a hidden this. gem. Okay, this yeah. is incredible. <laughs> it is right there in the heart of Gordon Square. $6 for all you can play pinball. Oh my goodness. So you can take the family and have, I mean, hours of fun. You yeah. can keep the kids entertained forever over there. That's, it's funny you say kids because then I immediately thought of like, oh gosh, I want to do a happy hour with my friends yeah. and just go yeah. play, play some games and get some drinks. Any favorite happy hour spots? Like oh. if you are doing a date night. I, so I live on the west side, so I tend okay. to stick to the, left, the west side. Um, I'm also a big brewery fan. Yeah. If you haven't been to Immigrant Sun in Lakewood, I have to give them a plug. They're one of our newest breweries here in Cleveland. I absolutely love it. The food's incredible. The owner has a great story. So much good food, um, Hungarian cuisine. The beer is exceptional over there. Yeah. Um, and then usually if I'm doing a happy hour, I'm downtown, if I'm being honest, because I'm just leaving work. Right. Um, a lot of people work downtown, so check out those new spots that I talked about. Um, check out Indy, go to the rooftop. Those, yeah. I cannot say enough about their cocktails and what they've done with the space there. It's just so cool. Yeah. I, I cannot get enough of the food and drink scene here in <laughs> Cleveland. That is my sweet spot for yeah. sure. Awesome.
Jen, you've given us a million things to do, so I really appreciate it because uh, we definitely have to take advantage of these summer, summer months. I yeah. always kick myself when it's back to school time and I'm thinking, gosh, I didn't do half of the things I wanted to do. So we're going to have to get our own little Northeast Ohio passport and, yeah. and go explore. Yeah. Thank you so much. This Thank was you. great. Yeah. Have a great uh, summer. Yeah. Thanks. You too. <laughs> thanks. And same to all of you listening. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you right back here on the Mom Squad Pod. Thanks for listening to Mom Squad Pod with Maureen Kyle from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now so you never miss an update. And find more on everything you heard here on WKYC.com and on the WKYC app.